After defeating a string of strong Republican contenders in the primaries of 2016, Donald Trump reshaped the Republican Party almost completely. Few correspondents have followed the transformation more closely than Major Garrett, and he joins us now to talk about the Republican Party in this moment. Major, you are there in Mar-a-Lago. Would you give us just a scene yep. there as, uh, as they await Donald yep. Trump on this day? Sure. So this is the Republican Party influenced by Donald Trump in miniature, John. And as America watched the first time indictment of a former president this afternoon, what you can see over my shoulders is an ongoing, first in American history, indictment of a former president party. There is a celebratory atmosphere here, and you might ask yourself reasonably, what is there to celebrate? Well, this crowd, and I've talked to many people here, feel that this is a political persecution of their favorite political figure, Donald Trump. They don't regard it as legitimate. And what they want to communicate with their presence here as they cradle their glasses of wine or martinis or beers or carry their bottles of water is that Donald Trump is their renegade political figure. And there is something, as you well know, John, deep in the American psyche that loves the renegade. And these Trump supporters very much love the renegade aspect of the former president, are pretty convinced that he's going to beat this rap in their terminology, not mine. And they want to be here to witness his first public remarks about that and offer their enthusiastic support for that fight legally, which they believe is also only partially legally. They believe this is mostly a political battle and they want to be here to communicate to him they stand by his side. You mentioned renegade, Major. Uh, the Trump campaign put out that mugshot, even though there was not an official mugshot. They're fundraising off of right. a mugshot, which suggests the president's running, again, to your point about in the American character as a kind of outlaw. I wonder what your yes. sense is of, is it possible to put the party in categories at this moment? How many are in the love him like an outlaw category, which would be the, those people you're with right. this evening? And how many in the other categories, roughly speaking, uh, in the Republican Party as it's currently conceived? That is the great test. And it's hard to detect and hard to discern, John, mm -hmm. because there is, not in this room, but you can see it in polling data. When I travel the country, I pick it up, a Trump fatigue. But is it so pronounced a fatigue that it would throw over the former president? Well, that's not clear yet. And the field is still relatively minuscule in polling data compared to the former president. So right now, in this moment, it is a moment of visibility. It is a moment of rallying around the former president. But is that long lasting? We don't know. The Republican Party doesn't know. And there are certainly plenty of skeptics in the Republican Party who don't believe this set of charges against the former president will wear well, will age well, that he really doesn't want to talk about the underlying facts. He doesn't want to talk about what he did or didn't do in terms of hush money payments in the context of the 2016 campaign and how involved he personally was. They know or sense he really doesn't want to talk about that. But what they do want to talk about is Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan District Attorney, crime in New York City, issues not related to the underlying charges, but a larger conversation about the place that Donald Trump figures in American political life as compared to his opponents. And trust me, if I've learned anything, John, about the Trump movement, it is as much about Trump as it is about the perceived or actual opponents or enemies of Trump. They coexist very tightly, and it's very difficult psychologically to separate one from the other. Well, picking up exactly on that point, Major, I, I wonder what you make of two figures who are not fans of Donald Trump, Senator Mitt Romney uh, of Utah and Jeb mm -hmm. Bush, the former uh, Republican governor of Florida, both of whom have not defended Trump directly. In fact, Mitt Romney tonight said he lacks the character, character right. to be president, but they have both attacked Alvin Bragg for uh, overreaching, which essentially puts them mm -hmm. on the side of those you describe in that room who feel the president, former president is being per persecuted. Both Mitt Romney and Jeb Bush are articulating something that is not pro-Trump, but from their vantage point is pro-American justice. And they fear, because they've watched how these things toggle back and forth between the Trump movement and political actors around the Trump movement. If, in fact, a local prosecutor, a Manhattan district attorney in this case, but a local prosecutor in any jurisdiction can at some future date 
use their local jurisdiction to indict a sitting president or former president, down which road does that lead American justice and American politics? That is the hesitation that Jeb Bush and Mitt Romney are expressing. And it's one that they're not alone in expressing. Plenty of legal scholars and political analysts worry about that, too. What does this mean? Alvin Bragg said in his defense today, no one is above the law. There was a, I, the grand jury believes, and I brought in evidence before the grand jury, sufficient to suggest a crime was committed. And there was knowledge of that crime as it was being committed. And therefore, accountability must be brought. But that is not a universal sentiment, most clearly not in this room. And even those Republicans who are not supportive of the former president don't want him to be the Republican nominee, certainly don't want him to be elected to another term as president of the United States. But look at this and wonder, what does it mean for our conversation and our application of law, justice, and their relationship to politics? All right, Major Garrett in Palm Beach, Florida. We'll be back with you again a little bit later. Major, thank you so much.